Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today I thought we'd have a bit of fun and make some little glow-in-the-dark pumpkin earrings and they're made with night glow clay on the inside and when they've been charged up by being held under, under some light or zapped with a UV light you can see they really glow in the dark and I'll show you at the end when I turn all the lights off just how much they glow in the dark. It's a fun technique I've just done a very basic pair of earrings and used uh, a slightly different way of making a hollow bead. One that I don't think I've seen before, but something that I did some years ago. It's not necessarily the best way of making a hollow bead, but it is different. So if you have a better way, obviously use your own way. This is done with really easy tools and techniques and things that you'll have around the house. So on that, let's get on to the equipment you need for today's project. So for today's project, you're going to need some form of polymer clay blade. I sometimes refer to these as tissue blades because that's what I know them as in the UK. A little craft knife of some description. Some form of tool along the lines of a knitting needle. This is just a short four millimeter knitting needle. You are going to need a teaspoon and a couple of dessert spoons. And this is actually a measuring spoon. This one is a teaspoon size. These ones are tablespoon size. You need a little square of tights or the similar similar um, material but something that's really nice and stretchy with very small holes. A small square of facial tissue, two ply, roughly the same size as your piece of tights. You'll need some form of thread, something that's nice and thick that you can um, tie nice and tight and make a knot with that's not going to break. I'm going to use chalk pastel to add some colour to the outside of my pumpkin and I've got various colours of orange and ochres and browns and then when we get to do the top of the pumpkin I use the green as well. If you haven't got any of the chalk powders then mica powders will do and if you don't have any of those then once the pumpkin has finished rather than putting on the colour before it's baked you can put on some acrylic paint after it's baked or cured. If you've got them teeny tiny cutters are handy just for something like the nose but you don't need them you can always cut out a shape just with your craft knife instead. To remove the tights, paper, salt, etc. from inside our pieces once they have baked, you'll need a small pair of um, nail or small cutting scissors and some form of tweezers, something you can get into the shape with to remove once baked. To brush on our chalks, you will need some brushes. Um, any brushes will do. These happen to be some from Tiny Pandora. Teresa Salgado's site and they're very good for it because I, I actually use the small one when I'm doing down the um, lines of the pumpkin and then the broader one just to add some colour um, around the outside. A bowl just to um, put the salt over and also if you don't take out your um, inside of the hollow beads over a sink which is what I would normally do but obviously I haven't done for this tutorial I have done it inside a bowl so a bowl would be good for that any bowl will do it doesn't have to be particular stainless steel one. We do of course need some ordinary table salt, just common or garden that you would use when you're cooking or at your table. Just a couple of teaspoonfuls, so not this amount. We will also need a little bit of liquid clay and this is just some that I've decanted in a little pot for ease of use. A small ball tool is quite handy, not necessary but it is quite useful and this one's about five millimeters on one end and about four millimeters on the other. Whenever you're using chalks or something that it very powdery, then it is always advisable to wear a mask to make sure you don't breathe in any fine powders. A cocktail stick and just a small piece of ordinary paper. And then as always a tile to bake on, some aluminium foil to tent the tile whilst the clay is curing to make sure that if the oven spikes it doesn't harm the clay and as always some wet wipes and tissues just to wipe my hands and keep my tools and equipment nice and clean whilst I'm working and a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use just to get ourselves some nice thin sheets of clay. So that's all of it for the main part but if you want to make your pumpkins into earrings You'll need a couple of findings, these are the fish hook type ones, a couple of head pins, these are the ones with the flat bit on top. If you haven't got this, then um, just take a short length of wire and create a curl on the bottom, something that's going to stick inside the clay like the head pin will here, and then some round nosed and some cutting pliers. And that is all we need. So let's move on to the clay that we need for today's project. 
So for today's project I'm using Fimo Soft Polymer Clay. All brands of polymer clay will work well with this te technique but you do need a night glow. This is what this one's called um, in Fimo Soft and this is the one that shows up under fluorescent light. So just to show you. That's what it looks like if you put a UV light on it and that's what you need in order to make the pumpkin earrings glow. So I have got half an ounce or 14 grams of the night glow. Then to make a thin layer, which goes over the night glow, we have got quarter ounce of seven grams of the white with a tiny amount of olive, just to make it a slight off-white. You can see how thin amount there is there of the olive green. For the stalks, we are using an eighth of an ounce or three and a half grams of the olive green with a tiny bit of chocolate, just to dull that color down slightly. And then for our pumpkin color, we have got tangerine, of which there's a quarter ounce or seven grams, and then a small amount, probably about one gram's worth, of Indian red, and even less than that, tiny bit there, again, of the chocolate. And that makes a nice sort of dark, pumpkin-y orange colour. So that's all the equipment, that's all the clay. Let's get started making those hollow earrings. Now there are lots of ways of making hollow forms and I know there's lots of other ways available on the internet and looking on YouTube but I don't know that anyone's done it this way before so it just takes some very simple ingredients. So we will take our tights, obviously I've just chopped off bits here. Now I'm only going to do one of each of these but obviously we're making earrings so don't forget to do two and I will do exactly the same on the other set with the first set as I go along. Take your piece of two ply facial tissue, which we've chopped into that square, and that just sits inside our spoon. Cut yourself a piece of your thread and have it to hand, and then over something that's going to catch the salt, pour yourself a level teaspoon full of salt. I'll use my blade just to level that off, because then I know I'm going to do exactly the same in both sides. And tip that into the middle of your tissue. You're then going to gather up the tights and the tissues and leave the salt in the bottom a little bowl. Now take your time about this, don't, don't rush it, but slowly, slowly pull up the tights, pull the material up, so you've got it nicely up all while holding the salt. And give yourself a bit of a neck. So push the salt down so you're creating a ball at the bottom with a thinner piece around the neck as you can make. Now we're going to have quite an, a wide neck on these anyway, so don't worry about this end too much. But just get yourself a nice ball shape. And then with the middle of your thread, start wrapping your thread tightly around the ball and around the top of this neck. Tie a knot. And there is your first ball done. And the reason I like the salt is because it's so movable. You can sort of like change the shape of it, so I can have it sort of pumpkin shaped. And we can do that once the clay is on as well. I've got quite a lot of excess here, so I'm just going to chop off a little bit of it. I still want enough to work with so I can hold on to it whilst I'm putting the clay around, but not so much as to be bulky or get in the way. So that goes, the rest goes in the bin, and there's our first one done, so repeat exactly the same with the second one. So those are our two little forms all done, ready for the clay to go on. So I've conditioned all of my clays, um, conditioned them thoroughly, starting with the night clay, then moving on to the white mix, then the red mix and finally onto the green mix. Now the night glow one I've put through on setting number three of my machine. The white mix has gone through on setting number eight and this nice sort of pumpkin color um, has gone through on setting number six. And the green at the moment is just rolled up into a ball because we don't need that until much later on. So put that to one side. If you're unsure about conditioning clay, I've got a video with some tips and techniques on that and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. 
a my pasta machine the setting numbers naught is thick and nine is thin so i've gone on medium very thin and fairly thin and we're going to start by just covering our earrings in a layer of the night glow because that's the bit obviously it needs to go on the inside so it can be seen when the face is cut out and all you need to do is you're going to very gently wrap up hopefully your square is big enough to go all the way around and where it reaches the top very gently cut down through the clay nothing more so just pull it apart overlap it where it overlaps you can generally see where to cut down push it together and repeat doing that going the whole way around your little earring. Once you've done that don't worry about the top bit, we're going to needen that off later, but just start to roll all the joins together with the knitting needle. Now the salt will move under it, it'll sort of bulge and sort of twist as you go down. That's fine, just get used to it. It's quite good for then rolling out because you can get a nice smooth finish on your clay. It makes a nice sort of crunchy noise as well when you're uh, going over it. If you've got any little bits of dirt on the outside of your clay, don't worry about that again, that's not going to show in the final thing. Once I've got all the joins put together, I'll just gather it up and pull it slightly more in towards the top. Go over, make sure I've got no gaps, no joins in the seams left showing. And then make it sort of just very roughly into a pumpkin shape. And then repeat that with your second one. Once you've done that for both, then we're going to repeat exactly the same thing, covering each in a very thin layer of this sort of light greeny colour. And the reason we're doing this between the night glow and the red is because this is opaque, whereas this one's very sort of slightly translucent. So having the opaque clay behind it will just give the night glow even more of a glow. So just the same as we did before, put your clay over, cut a line down, and wherever it joins, just cut the excess off and just work your whole way around the outside of the pumpkin. Again, not worrying at all about the top. As I said before, we'll neaten that off later. And again, once you've finished one, repeat with the second one. And then we're going to add the red as a final coat. Exactly the same way. Don't forget if you ever chop too much off you can always just patch a little bit but when it's all on and when you're happy repeat for the second one. When they're both done it's time to make them start looking more like pumpkins rather than orange blobs. So first thing I'm going to do with this ball tool I'm just going to create a dimple on the bottom and again I will do one at a time and once I've done one work on the next and then with my blunt ended knitting needle I'm just going to create a groove up the side curl it up and then curl it into the top. And I'm going to do that all the way around the side, not in equal amounts, so try and make them vary them. And once you finish with the big um, inserts, then just take the end of your knitting needle and just create little lines around the outside, as many or as few as you like. Go back 
to the top. Make sure you've got all the lines going right up to this neck of your pumpkin. Once all the lines are in, go back to the bottom and recreate that divot. Make sure you've got a nice sort of pumpkin shape and then repeat with the second one. So having got them both done, the next thing to do is to add some colour to our pumpkins. Now I'm going to use, as I said at the beginning, the chalks, but you can of course use anything else you want to colour them. If you were just going to use paints, um, wet paints, then I'd colour it all right at the end once they've been baked and finished rather than doing it now. But mica powders or chalks, then put it on at this stage because that'll embed into the clay before it bakes. And the other thing of course, if you're using anything which is powdery, in any way you're going to be breathing it in, please do remember to wear some form of um, dust protector mask. So I've just got myself a piece of paper and then with the edge of my blade I'm just going to scrape myself off a little bit of the chalk to put it into a pile here. So once we've got the chalks there and ready, I will start from the dark and work my way up to the light. And for the, the dark ones, I'm going to use the thinner of the brushes. And then when we get on to the other colours, I will use a, a slightly wider brush. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the darkest one and then just fit some of this into the dark, deeper veins. And I'm literally just brushing it on. Having done one, I'll move on to the next. Then onto the lighter brown. Same sort of thing, just going in some of the grooves. Now I'll swap to the wide brush and I'm going to start working down the lighter colours. And I found from experience it's always best to work on do the one and then go straight on to the other one because otherwise if you just do one you tend to get carried away and then you won't repeat the same thing on a pair. And the lighter colours I'm doing towards more of the middle. And then finally, I'm going to add some of the light a bit. Now we get to the fun bit of putting a face into our earrings. Now you can go as weird and wacky as you like. Um, I'm going to keep mine fairly simple and do the same on both earrings. Of course you can have two completely different designs on each earring. You can have one earring one size, one earring the, earring the other. So don't worry about being too precise with this. But I'm going to keep fairly straightforward just because it's easier to show you on a simple design. You can download and look for um, Halloween face templates online. There's loads of free ones to look for. So once you've decided what your design is going to be, find a place on your pumpkin where you think it would fit in nicely. And with a cocktail stick, just roughly draw in place where you want your cutouts to be. I think my mouth will go there. One little tooth, another little tooth, and then come up to the side. The thing is, if you draw it wrong, at this stage you can still go back, re-push sort of um, push it in with your knitting needle, recreate the grooves, go back and do more chalk. So don't worry too much about things going wrong. So we'll do the eyes. I'm going to come over here. Something like that. This one over here. Something like that. And then we'll have a little round nose in the middle. So once you've got your design, 
and we are very carefully going to cut down through all the layers of clay with our craft knife. Now you don't obviously want to go through and pierce the, um, the salt um, inside but you should be able to go down enough so you just hear that slight crunch and get that feel of where the netting is of the tights. So very gently, I'm not going to cut so much as just press in little increments all the way down. and you should be left with and be able to see the netting underneath. So what I'm going to do now with the edge of my knife, I'm just going to push back any bits that are uneven, just to so give myself a nice neat cut through. Checking where the teeth are going to go. Okay, so that's the mouth done. And then we're going to repeat exactly the same with the eyes. And then for the nose, if you've got one of these teeny tiny cutters, you should, with any luck, be able to go straight through, all the way down, do you hear the crunching? Pull out, and there's your nose. So I can adjust him slightly. And then the last thing we need to do before we bake it, is we need to get rid of all this collar of clay we've got around here. So all we're going to do, we're going to do a little jagged marks. my knitting needle I will just roll those very slightly flatter towards the top check all my ridges to make sure I haven't sort of flattened them all with my hands whilst I was working check the dimple in the bottom and when I'm happy he will sit in his little spoon and I will work on the next one. So once they're both done, I'll bake them on a tile inside their spoons and tent the whole piece in foil to protect them should the oven spike whilst um, baking and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. So I'll come back to finish them off once they have baked. Once your pieces have come out of the oven and they've cooled slightly, just pop them into a bowl of water and let them soak for a little bit. Then with a pair of scissors, you're going to very gently sort of get in and chop off and open up the tights and the tissues. Just you can start getting that salt to come out and to dissolve. And then with a pair of tweezers, you can gently ease the tights away from the outside wall and you can hear a sort of crunching noise as you do it and you want to make sure they're away from all the sides Once you've managed to ease all the tights away from the outside, it should all come away quite easily. And then just repeat for the other one. Once your pieces are dry, and you've neatened up any bit, because you can always go back in with a craft knife if there's any uneven bits, and just neaten them off, we need to add the top bits. So take your green clay. Now you don't need very much at all for this. What you want to do is take about half of it, and you want to create a little bit that's just about big enough to fit around the top. 
once you've got that amount, take the rest off. Take your head pin and put it through the middle of your green piece. Take a little bit of your liquid clay and just smear some around the entrance where we've left that hole. And because we made that all jagged, you should be able to just gently fit your green piece down on there and taking your knitting needle, just pull the clay down into all those little zigzag lines we created. And once it's smoothed down, then with your edge of your fingers, just start to create a small stem by pulling most of the clay away because this should only be a little cap that goes on the very top. And because you've got that wire in place, because it's firmly in, you can just press against it until you create a nice small stem. When you're happy with the size of it with your craft knife, just cut all the way around. And if it won't pull off easily off the wire, just cut it off the wire. So you're left with just a small bit on top, so we can create some tendrils by just taking a small piece of your green clay, rolling it into a bit of a sausage, and then rolling out till you have a really nice thin long tapering point. Just take off a piece. And decide where you want the tapering point to go. There's a bit of dirt there, so we'll start there. And just swirl it round. You can twist it round by twisting the clay until it goes up and meets the top. And where it meets the top, just use your knitting needle to smooth it in. And you can do two or three of those around the outside. I haven't used any liquid clay to stick those on because it will stick to itself once it's baked but if you always aren't sticking for any reason then you can always add just a little dob or so of a little bit of liquid clay. When you're happy, when you've got enough tendrils on, I'm just going to, with my knitting needle, just create a couple of grooves up towards the stalk. So repeat for the second one and then just the same as before, if you want to add a little bit more detail, you can just add a little bit of chalk. And also, as before, just bake them inside the spoons according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And when we come back, we'll do the final bit and put the earring findings on. So once the pumpkins are out and cool and ready to add the earring findings on. All I'm going to do is put my finger up against, chop off the excess, it'll be about there. Do the same with this one. My finger up there so it's roughly the same place. Chop off the excess. And then the finding I'm going to use are these fish, fish hook ones which will fit that way around so because that hook's going that way this loop needs to go that way. So I'm just going to take the piece fold the wire down and then with the roll of your pliers roll it up all the way around and then quite often because it's a cut end, you can actually dig the end into the clay, so you end up with a nice little hoop at the top of your piece. With your earring, simply open the back of that and fit it onto the pumpkins going face down. Close the loop back up and there you have your finished earring piece. So I will do the same with the other one and then they're ready, once it's got set up with some light, to actually start glowing in the dark. So there we go, there are our finished earrings and if you hit them with a bit of UV light, you 
You can see how much they glow in the dark. And once they've sat long enough in front of a bright light, you should find we have our glow in the dark earrings. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I've kept my faces very simple just to give you the basic technique. So obviously you can go as detailed as you like. And don't forget, if you sort of like zap them with a bit of UV light, they really glow as well. Now the night glow doesn't sadly last very long. Um, it's generally sort of only, only a few minutes. The longer you leave them exposed, the better. But if you do get one of those little UV lights and take it out with you, you can just every so often zap your ears and they all glow again like mad. So there we are, that was it for this tutorial, a nice quick little one, just in time for a bit of Halloween fun. And there are so many things you can do with the night glow clay, so have some fun. That's the end of the project, I hope you enjoyed that one, and thanks as always for watching, and for those of you who subscribe, again a special thank you because I really do appreciate it. Right, I think that's it for now, hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now, bye. <laughs>